in this next set of videos we're going to introduce the new Logic 10 Retro Synth. So I'm going to uh, go on the instrument track here and I'm just going to load it up. Here we go, Retro Synth. And uh, this is our default setting. So before we do anything, uh, I'm just going to click on this settings uh, button here and I'm just going to change a few things. Uh, with this default setting, uh, it actually has double on, and what that does is it actually plays two notes at the same time. And you can control how much they're detuned in sense here. So I'm actually going to turn that off, just so that we get a single sound. You can also hear now it's actually panning, and that's from this stereo spread as well. It kind of stereos out the sound. Uh, so I'm going to put that down to zero. So we just have a uh, very, very simple sound. So I'm just going to click on the settings again. Let's just have a little quick look around what we've got here. In this left-hand section here at the top, we have our four different oscillator engines. We've got analog, sync, table, and FM. And we're going to have a look at all of those individually. So sticking with the analog section here, we have two oscillators. Uh, you can see this one here and this one here. And uh, we can actually mix between the two just with this slider. This is very similar to the ES1 synth. So if I have it right at the top here, we're only listening to this uh, top oscillator. And from here, we can actually select the different waveforms. So we have a sawtooth here, we bring it down. We have a white noise. If we bring it up, we have a square wave. And as we move it round, it's changing the width or the pulse width. And the shape of this can actually be controlled uh, with this button here. If we bring it down to the left hand side where it says LFO, then the LFO setting here will control the shape of the sound. At the moment, this slide is right at the top, which means that the modulation wheel, which is what it's set to, is going to be controlling the amount of LFO. If we bring that right down, it will implement the LFO without the need to use the wheel. So you can see how that's affecting uh, the shape of this sound. If we bring that back to zero, you can see it's having no effect at all. And if we bring it round to the filter envelope, you can see now we have this filter envelope section here, the waveform is going to be controlling the shape of the sound. So let's bring this back to LFO again. You can see this only applies to this square or rectangular wave. If we bring it back down to the sawtooth, it doesn't have any effect at all. Uh, just to the right hand side, we have a vibrato function. And we can increase that. And if we just click over here to the vibrato, same thing. If we pull this down, it means that the vibrato is going to be implemented without the need for the wheel. And this vibrato is affecting the pitch. It's modulating the pitch rather than the amplitude. So moving over to the right hand side, this is where we have our filter section. We can choose the filter type here. We've got a low pass, we've got high pass, band pass. These are very similar to the type of filters we get in the uh, EXS24. But let's stick with this one for the moment, this low pass 24 dB. And here we have our filter cutoff. We can either drag this little kind of node here or we can actually click on where it says cutoff there. And you can see how that's being affected. And then we also have resonance if we drag it up. can see how that's working. We also have this envelope control here and this actually affects how much of the filter envelope is affecting the filter cutoff as well. So if we put that up and then we change the waveform, you can see how that's working. Um, if we put that down to zero, it's not affecting it at all. If we go the other way to minus, it's actually doing it in reverse. We can also get the LFO to affect the cutoff as well. And you can get some great effects with this. 
and we can change the shape of the waveform as well. So we could put it to a square wave or a sawtooth going that way or a sawtooth going that way. This is a particularly nice effect. And also uh, with this LFO, we can change the rate as well. At the moment, uh, it's not synced to anything. It's not synced to the BPM. We've got a BPM of 120. If we turn that on, we can then adjust the actual rate here. So we've got 30 seconds dotted. This is 16th here. So this is very, very cool for uh, creating some kind of rhythmic effects to go with uh, the beat that you're working on. So let's just take that LFO off. And now let's go over to the second oscillator. So if we click down here to oscillator 2, we have slightly different uh, set of waveforms. Here we've got a triangle. This is very good for kind of smooth sounds. Sawtooth. And then we've got our similar square changing the pulse here as well. So what we can do is that we can combine these two oscillators just by dragging this to the middle, however much you want of each you can control. And then we can actually uh, adjust the tuning between these as well. So for example, we could uh, create a fifth. So uh, if we put this up to seven semitones, And we can give it a bit of detune as well in sense. That kind of provides a bit of a uh, chorusy effect. And if we shoot over to the bottom right hand corner, we have our amplitude envelope here. And uh, we can shape the amplitude of the sound so we can give it a bit more release. Very nice sound there. We can give it a bit more of an attack. And um, <clears throat> what's useful to know with this is if we increase the release here, you can see that the chords are overlapping. And this is something that we can avoid by going back to the settings and actually just changing the amount of voices that are played. At the moment, it's got the maximum of 16. If we put that down to two, you can see that as I'm playing two notes at the same time, they're being cut off, kind of choked, each time I play the chord. So let's just put that back to 16. And uh, now we could actually put double back on. And we could detune them a bit and we can increase the stereo spread. We get a really nice sound there. Let's put this back to four. So there's a couple of other things that we haven't looked at yet. Um, we also have a glide function here. So if we turn that on, that's basically portamento. And we can change the time of this. You can see it's gliding from one note to the next. And we can actually choose what mode we can uh, have this. So we just have the oscillator, uh, one or oscillator two. At the moment, I've got it set to all oscillators. So you can get some interesting effects there. Now, uh, also with uh, oscillator one, as well as playing the selected waveform, it also plays a sine wave. And you can increase the level of this with this knob here, the sine wave amplitude. Put the attack back on here. So this could be really useful for creating some nice fat bass sounds. And we have an overall volume here as well for the whole device. Uh, we have a couple of effects here. If we click this on, we've got a flanger. We can increase the balance or the amount of that and the rate as well. This is the rate. This is uh, just the effect, so you can just dial in as much of that as you want. Uh, we also have a chorus as well. 
very nice. Again, it kind of fattens out the sound. And finally, uh, just going back to the filter section, we also have this uh, <coughs> filter FM knob here. And this applies some FM processing to the waveform. So you can experiment around with that. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at the sync section. Every two weeks in the course, uh, an assignment is set. So once I've done my assignment, which is essentially a track, I upload it for my tutor to download. And he sends me back a DVR, which is a direct video response. It's a video produced by your tutor um, that is sent to you personally every couple of weeks while you're, you're studying, giving you immediate feedback on your production. It's something that enables the students to have a one-to-one -one connection with their tutor. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. And I think this kind of steel can sound is brilliant. I mean, that's, that's a real kind of hook of the track, this. Maybe let's just try uh, recording something in. The response that the tutor gives is completely tailored to the student's style of music or the level that they're at as well. So it might be nice to spice up this drum track by adding a delay. And you can see I've put one here in the return of the drum rack. And uh, if we just apply that to the clap now, See, it has a really nice effect. If you want to check out the whole range of online courses, go to pointblankonline.net.